So I've always contemplated on getting a 3D printer because I always thought, what am I gonna print? Toys? <laughs> but that thought changed. Earlier on this year, I wanted to use my Z Fold 2 for my YouTube videos because obviously there's a strong camera. But then I struggled to get a camera mount for it because of the weird form factor. And then I tried to Google around and then I realized that there were some people who were creating phone mounts, phone mounts using a 3D printer. And I was like, ah, that could be an idea. Then I started feeling, okay, let me start checking the 3D printers and all that. And before I knew it, I was now watching videos where they have like functional prints. And obviously my interest picked, I was sort of watching those videos like all the time in my bed, on my desk, actually anyway. Then obviously the, in the interest peaked and guess what? I ended up pulling the plug. And then that's why I got this Ender 3 S1 Pro from Creality as my first 3D printer. And today I'll be showing you how I've unboxed it as well as set it up and some few test prints. So let's get this started. As I said, we'll be unboxing the Ender 3 S1 Pro. And the packaging looks fine. If you open it up, we see that it's packaged well. There's some sort of uh, foam that is keeping everything intact. And I think I like this because then obviously through shipping, a lot of stuff can happen. So this being packed in this way means that it will sort of be protected well um, and protected against any bumps that happen through shipping, right? So let's take everything out of the box. Firstly, we have the base, which includes the PEI magnetic steel plate, which I believe that is an improvement from the Ender S3 S1. And because I've also heard that that one was not working well for people, it would sort of leave some residue and it will be difficult to set up, take it out. So that's one of the reasons I actually even waited for the S1 Pro, because as a beginner, you don't want to be going through a whole lot of trouble. And then the next one, the next thing that we have is the gantry, which also includes dual Z axis motors, as well as next we have the filament spool holder, that includes a filament runout sensor, which is also a nice touch, which is also included actually in the Ender 3 S1. We also then have um, the power cable. Next, we have the tools that are included with this, which is also a nice touch because you don't need any external stuff to set up your printer and get it working. Um, and then next thing, we also have the touch screen which is also an improvement from the Ender 3 S1, which didn't have a touch screen. So there's also a nice touch. Next thing we we'll also have the manual, which is obviously something that would be included and some sample filament, which is good so that you can actually test your printer. And then lastly, we have the Sprite Extruder Pro, which is direct drive extruder, which is also nice because then it's easier to print filament like TPU, like sort of your flexible filament. And it's also an improvement from the Ender, S, Ender 3 S1, which also has a similar one, but it's not all metal. So meaning you can't print, uh, it's not ideal to print uh, filament that needs some, some sort of high temperature. So this is also a nice touch. Let us start setting it up. We start with the gantry. There's some holes that we can put the gantry through and after putting them through the screws included in the tools um, so in here there's well some of the tools are this cutter and some screws and 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 some allen keys right so to to fasten the gantry we need the bigger screws that are included there which i believe are m5 by 45 but it's the bigger ones the, the ones that are black you take it we take it to one side because it's easier to actually 
good so at the bottom on on either side there's two holes where you're gonna put them up so put the first one uh, screw it up we turn it or turn the gantry to the other side also screw it up and now we can see that the gantry is securely fastened and everything is fine right then next thing we go to the sprite extruder pro this there's also some four holes to, in, to install it and yeah we we use the m3 by six screws i'm not so sure i'll also confirm right there if it's not correct i'll write it down in the video um, but it's the smallest ones that you're going to have included tool packaging right so you also use one of the tools to fasten those in once you have those ones fastened we now try to install the filament holder and this doesn't has it doesn't have any screws so you just sort of snap it snap it in place and there you have it the next we're gonna start connecting some cables so for the sprite extra pro you need to connect this black strip of cable connect it up and then after connecting it there's a clip to ensure that it's securely placed once that is installed the next thing is to install connectors so on your left hand side there's two cables that need to be connected the smaller part goes into the x limit switch the bigger part goes into the stepper motor after that is connected if you look on the base also there's connector for the stepper motor there also you connect that stepper motor and then looking at your right hand side there's also connectors there one is for the stepper motor and then there's also one for the led light and then the other one the last one is for the filament detector right so let's connect that also then so the next thing we need to connect the cable for the filament detection sensor i realized that actually i might have just put the filament holder way to the right so i'm gonna remove it and put it closer to the middle so that i'm able to connect the cable managed to connect the cable i do have a bit of a worry on the left hand side where on the connectors it seems like with the cable that connects to the x limit switch as well as the stepper motor on the left hand side on my unit it seems like it's sort of stretched and i'm not so sure why this is the case but i'll just keep on monitoring have one year warranty and we'll see how it goes especially if i start printing some sort of bigger um objects uh, taller objects to sort of see if it struggles because obviously if it goes down then it's not a problem then the last thing to install is the touch screen and then this there's also out of those screws the middle sized ones and i'm not so sure if this is m6 by 18 I'm not so sure about all the terminology <laughs> i'm sort of new to this but i'm gonna write the right name on the video again connect this i found it a bit difficult to connect it took me some time but after some struggle i managed to actually end up connecting it right so now that we have everything connected the last thing to connect is obviously the power cable so let's connect the power cable and then now that the power cable is connected there's a switch on the right hand side to switch on the machine so let us switch it on so on the screen it starts showing reality it starts up so let us also take off the, the screen protector that was there i do notice something so there's a notice there that reminds you to make sure that you change the switch to the right voltage for your country and the weird thing is on my 3d printer this is blocked with a statement that also says that if i remove that then the warranty is void and then obviously i was not going to remove it so i just assumed that then it means that it has been set up correctly to 234 230 volts and not 110 so i'll just go with it i at least have a video of proof that if something goes wrong i just couldn't do anything about it right so enough about that let's look at testing the printer first thing that we'll do is we will try to level the printer to level the bed right and then to level you go to settings you go to level and then there's the auto level which uses a cr touch and then auxiliary level which means that you would usually 
uh, level using the A4 paper. So we'll start with that one and go through each and every corner, try to level it. And in the, the bottom, there's some screws that allow you to level. I found it a bit confusing at first, but if you look closely how it works, you just need to see where you should be turning for up, where, when you should be turning for down. It's not the same for all of them, so obviously you just need to make sure you look at the right part and then keep on turning. Once we've managed to level the bed or to our satisfaction, we can now switch on the auto bed level that's going to use the CR touch. Let's start it. And this is going to probe the bed like at 16 points. And according to my understanding, this is going to create a mesh that will be added into the memory so that it can know what it should sort of compensate for with your bed not being level because that's obviously very important when you print the bed needs to be level okay so now that we're happy with that the next thing to do is to then feed some filament onto the extruder so obviously we'll need to first heat, heat it up so to do this you go to ready you go to manual and then you go to preheat PLA right so obviously this is gonna preheat the nozzle to 200 degrees as well as the bed to 60 degrees so let's wait for it to heat up once it's finished heating up to 200 so now obviously we can't actually feed filament without being uh, hot because obviously it's just gonna get stuck so now that it's hot and it's at the right temperature you can feed in some filament at the top you need to press um, this button or a holder there that allows you to then push the filament in We'll just keep on monitoring until we can see the filament is going through at the bottom. So it is going through at the bottom, which is great. We can now connect an SD card that's actually included there. My understanding is there's some pre-sliced pre files, so we can start testing the printer with them. Let's connect it, and the at the left, the left hand side, the left hand side, there's a connector there. Just so make sure you put it up straight the first time i put it the other way and it wouldn't read and i thought there was something wrong with my 3d printer but it was just not connected correctly so once you've connected it you can now go into the touch screen again click on print and you will see that it will show all the pre-sliced files the g code that's in there and i've decided let us test let us test the printer with the rabbit This is the results looks good but i have to say that i feel like the first layer is not good but i mean me as a beginner and i haven't really tuned the printer it could be the reason why it's not at the optimal level and obviously i know there's some guys that teach you on how to level your bed 100 percent correctly so i'll go look at that but at least we're 100 percent sure that it works and then after this printed i also wanted to 3d print the famous 3d benchy these are the results looks like the first layer is fine now um, it seems like there is some stringing so as i said i will still need to still tune the printer and there's some guides i'll also link some of the nice guys that i've seen that teach you, teaches you how to to, to tune your printer so for me i think this is good it's a nice printer for a beginner it just prints nicely and i'm quite excited with it but if you also want to grab one of this three awesome 3d printers i would then link you to the company that i, uh, I bought this from which is zaven pty ltd <laughs> i'm hoping i'm not butchering their name but i'll also include the link to this to their website where you can purchase it some great guys and they really help me and they actually off, offer some courses which i'm over also gonna attend to obviously improve my 3d printing skills if you have specific questions about the 3d printer you want to know do not hesitate to pop them in the comment box and i'll try my best to answer or if there's some something you really want to test i can also try to test that for you and I'll give you a response and obviously also include 
that in the review and if you haven't subscribed yet hopefully you enjoyed this video and you feel like it warrants a subscribe so and i'll be happy and also it warrants a like and i'll be happy if you could do that and i'll see you in the next one cheers